Paint Chevrolet in Springfield. Nine decades, three generations, one tradition. I got what I asked for at Paint Chevrolet. That's the honest truth. All right, we'll call the meeting to order. Uh, is there any citizen, citizen comments or do we do the roll call first? Um, there were no citizens that commented, that called or contacted to place any comments on Okay. No comments on from the citizens, okay. All right, we'll do a roll call vote. Davis. Here. Deaver. Here. DeLong. Here. Doris. Here. Hayden. Here. Ellen. Here. Mary Here. All right, we'll stand and have a moment of silence for those who are suffering during this time. Let's remember everybody in our election tomorrow, too. and review the position of the town administrator. Discuss and review the position of the town administrator. We have a motion. Second. We have a second. Who did the second? Be right. Okay. Davis? Yes. Deaver? Yes. DeLong? No. Doris? Yes. Higdon? No. Owen? Yes. Mayor Adcock? Yes. Can I, where do you want to put that up on here? Uh, put it, uh, the last thing on the agenda. After finance? Yes. Right, we have to approve the minutes of the October 5th, 2020 meeting. Do we have a motion? Motion. We have a motion. Second. Have a second, Mr. Bill. Davis? Yes. Deaver? Yes. DeLong? Yes. Doris? Yes. Higdon? Yes. Owen? Yes. Mayor Adcock? <clears throat> yes. All right, we have a presentation. Yes. Captain, um, Todd Doris um, completed a class at the Tennessee Law Enforcement Training Academy for Law Enforcement Management and Administration School in October. And then Officer Emmanuel Manaluves, or Manny, um, completed at the Tennessee Law Enforcement Academy, Training Academy, um, the School for Emergency Vehicle Operation Instructor. So he's now a certified instructor in that, and that was in September. And then um, Tiffany West has completed her courses and hours for um, Tennessee Municipal Clerk and Recorder, certified. All right. 
communications from the mayor. Uh, I had uh, Mrs. Uh, Stephanie Tulin. She's in the back back here. I've hired her as city recorder and treasurer. Uh, we'll bring that back to the board in December for a vote. But uh, she plans to start tomorrow. Uh, excuse me, Mayor. I'm, I'm a little confused. <laughs> mm -hmm. Did we not have anybody within the city that was qualified? Nothing against you. Nothing. But, but do we not have anybody in the city that was qualified for the job? Well, when we ran the ads, uh, we did not. Uh, and uh, this lady had applied and was interviewed, uh, came back and done her background check and her paperwork. And, uh, so she, you're already a city reporting party. Paul, yeah. It's expired. It's expired. Her certification. Well, she says it's not. Is she certified? Yes. Yes. <clears throat> she had, I think it was a few hours, four hours. Of... You have three years to complete your 18 credit hours of continuing education. Right. Yeah. Yes. There are three lacking. That's it. You have until the end of December to turn those in, which I did those today. So. But, but we do have somebody that's qualified in the city already. I've not been aware of it. Uh, I asked before we ran it in the paper, and they said no. And I think I went over that when uh, Rachel got the city administrator job. If it wasn't anybody qualified in the city, that we'd go to the outside. And as far as I know, that's what we've done. How was it advertised? It was in the paper. It was in the paper? Yes. And internally, there was two applicants internally. Oh, man. Did we not know that we had somebody that was right around the corner from being qualified? <laughs> I wouldn't know about it. I, was, I asked the question. So. I really want anybody that worked for the city to have ambition to go to school, to better themselves, to move up. If they're up there sweep, sweeping the streets, and they want to someday be city administrator, they ought to be able to do it if they will apply themselves. But if somebody's brought in outside, then they have no, why even try? Why even, what initiative do the employees have if you bring in outsiders without promoting within? But you don't wait till the last minute to get your education. You plan ahead. Well, I asked a question in the meeting. When we ran it internally, if we had anybody qualified, and the answer was no. Uh, I talked to this lady, and she came in and interviewed, and I hired her on an interim basis. Uh, she planned to come to work last week, and her husband has been having some health issues, and she, I agreed to tell her to just wait and come to the meeting tonight, so that's why. She hadn't already been at work, so. When are you starting, I'm sorry? Tomorrow. Because her background check hasn't come back yet. Because I thought you said it was next week. The second week in November. How long does it take the background to come back? I, I turn it over to the police, I can't. It all depends on the on the uh, job, uh, Mayor. Her background check will be, is pretty extensive because it involves finances and cash. Uh, I would say two days more, but because we don't just check on the phone, we actually go to locations and so forth. Okay. Uh, so I have a detective assigned to it, and I would uh, I can I can guarantee you two days we'll have it finished. Okay. By day after tomorrow. Thursday. Yes, sir. Okay. We'll change the start. I'll get, I'll get the report to you Wednesday. All right. Um, on, the, on, the, on the background yesterday. Mark Duration. All right. Our certification has expired. Is that, am I here? No, she says her certification is up to date. She lacks some continued education. Is it expired? No, sir, it's not expired. I've already contacted the state to verify. She 
set up um, it's fine until the end of December as long as I get the three credits turned into her. Oh, okay. okay. Yes. So, but we've got somebody here that's got all the hours and I disqualified, correct? I'm, that's the first I've heard of that. Like I said, we, you know, I asked the question when we uh, ran it internally. The answer was no. And at the time, Tiffany didn't. Oh, she wasn't at, the, at that right. particular time. Okay. Oh, I see that. Okay. But she is now. Yes. How did her interview go? How did, how did their, the two that, or three that, uh, they weren't interviewed because they didn't have the certification. The, the, the request was, and, and the qualifications are that they be certified. And uh, that's what we asked, and it was, it was told that, that we didn't have anybody. We ran it in the paper. I don't know, I didn't even, wasn't even aware that she was taking, uh, I was told that she was gonna sign up and do it in December, the last I asked. So. Now her, um, the finance part, she's doing in January. The um, treasurer part, the CMFO classes, the accounting. Were the these classes that she was taking to get certified? Did the city pay for those? Mm -hmm. A lot of them were um, free too. To yeah. anybody in in the yeah, anybody can take them. And um, the because I thing I didn't know because I knew that there was another applicant in there. I didn't know. Or another two? Was there three there total in the city? Three internal, one external, and then one that posted, one that applied before it was posted. Okay. How did they apply before it was posted? I'm not certain. Or who, who applied before it was posted? Miss Tolan. Oh, how would she know that there was even She applied opening? because I, I asked her, was told that she was a certified recorder, and that. When I was elected mayor, we didn't have one, and I asked <coughs> around and asked if anybody knew anybody that was certified that I need to hire somebody on a temporary basis. And she turned in a resume. Okay. And that's how that happened. Do we need a motion on this? For what? No, it's just your communications. All right, just my communication. All right, any other questions? We'll move on. Uh, we have a city planning session that is uh, scheduled for December, no, I'm sorry, November the 13th with MTAS. Uh, it was canceled and it's, is that the second time it's been canceled? Yeah, he has COVID. Oh my. Gary? Yeah, he called okay. today. So it's been rescheduled for December the 4th, one, one to five. Okay. This isn't the planning and zoning session. No. The communication from us? No, he's still on. Okay. okay. All right. Communication from the old. I, uh, I had somebody that. Uh, I wanted to compliment the city on the mowing uh, there at the city limits, uh, there at the flea market, uh, working their way up the railroad tracks. Um, and they said they did a, uh, an excellent job, and, a, and especially uh, the job done out on uh, what they refer to as, I guess, Beer Can Alley, but at Ebenezer and Logan. Mm -hmm. Said at least it's passable now. It's not a not a wonderful stretch and a wonderful road, but it is passable and open. So that's all I. Jerry Dar said he appreciated the roads getting fixed. And you've done it in a very timely manner, I thought. Yeah, they did it pretty quick. And the county had offered to give us ten loads of millions, and we wound up getting. I think it was 14 or 15 loads. Uh, they liked it a little bit being through, and he said, just come on back and get what they needed. So worked out good. I thought it looked, looked pretty good. Yeah, it did good. I just want to thank our city manager, Mr. Hill, police department, for doing as good as what they're doing. I was noticing on. Uh, 
in the papers I got here that they are trying to slow people down on 41 and it seems to be working. Uh, I think people are going a little slower now. So, And uh, IG Speedway is 90% better. Good. So they're doing a good job. And I've been out uh, handing out cards and meeting all the people in the ward. And uh, I do have a couple of issues to uh, bring up, but I'll bring them up later. Okay. Also, hats off to you, Roy. Uh, Y'all worked really hard at the park this past weekend. as as a heck of a event that y'all helped Tommy Tommy with out there. He uh, a lot of people had a hand in it, and, uh, but the kids seemed very happy. That was an excellent thing. Hopefully, we can do some more events out there uh, after COVID. Yeah. Uh, make some movies or something like that in the park. But job well done. Well, you did good. Anybody else? All right. Communication from the attorney. Uh, Mayor, I don't have anything. Mm -hmm. Report from the city administrator department is uh, Rachel. Um, I don't know if y'all have paid attention to the reports, but the, the monthly report, um, we were all reporting on different months, so some of the reports are the same as last month. The police, I think the fire was new, parks was the same, and then um, public work, works were the same. Um, my goal is to have the reports ready and posted online by the 20th of each month, and but I'll still include a packet, I mean, copy in your packet. Um, the current minute software that we have is from um, 2003, and this computer is from 2007. So, but before COVID and, and during last year's budget, we had purchased new software, and um, we're currently learning that. So, your reports in the future might look a little different, but that's a couple of months away. Um, we've applied for um, CARES Act funding. Um, the funding covers very specific things, and one of those things that's covered is a better way to communicate with the citizens. And so we've been approved to um, get a new website, a city app um, for smartphones, which will link to the website, and then a citizen's request system. Um, at the MTAS meeting, if you're interested, I can show you a demo with that. Um, and then we're also in the process of implementing a new work system uh, citizens will still call City Hall for a request about picking up limbs or trash or potholes or what have you. Um, the ladies in the front will enter it. It'll go to um, a computer in the back and the guys can check it and then update it as they're doing it so it can be tracked. Um, Ross at the sewer plant, um, okay. <laughs> um, Ross at the sewer plant um, has told has reported that um, they are now within compliance of the state issue permits for um, phosphorus and, oh gosh, this mess, um, phosphorus levels. I'm losing it. And then, hang on, I'm sorry, I'm having mask issues. Um, and I forgot to report this last month, but at the end of August, it was brought to my attention of an issue on Kelly Willis Road with um, potholes that were creating a very hazardous and potentially dangerous situation. It was declared an emergency and it was repaired and the amount of the repair was $10,550. Um, also, last month I reported on a repair to a lift station on West South Street and that cost was $19,055. And then I also printed off some information for the utility board and elected officials academy and how to sign up if you're interested in that. And that's all I have. Notice is, are we gonna have a meeting with MTAS in person or is this gonna be virtual training? The, 
the virtual training is the elected officials academy i think you went to that i, I did and then um the planning with mtas is what we do every year mm -hmm. i didn't know if we were going to do that or we were going to do that via zoom or no he'll, he should be here for that Chief Peck. Uh, sir, as Rachel said, uh, our October numbers and statistics will be presented at the next meeting. Uh, what you have before you is, is uh, the statistics that we went over already in the, in the prior meeting. I would like to say one thing uh, about uh, what my officers are doing. Uh, we've started an initiative where we're tr we had uh, several people who have lost loved ones here due to uh, overdoses heroin overdoses or fentanyl overdoses. Well, we've started an, an initiative to keep these people out of the city of Greenbrier that are bringing this stuff in here. Uh, and I'd like to give kudos to my officers because last, in September, they took 12 guns off the street on traffic stops from people that weren't supposed to have guns. Just this past weekend, uh, one of the officers made a traffic stop and took three guns out of one vehicle, one from a convicted felon, one of the guns was stolen, and one was on a juvenile. So all three of them were illegally possessed. Um, they're trying very hard, they're working very hard, they're doing a dangerous job, and I just want, I don't want people to uh, forget what they're doing after every night, because they're working hard. That's all I have. <coughs> The only other thing that I have to add is uh, in between the water leaks and all that, the guys have been working hard to clear around the water towers, which was part of the state thing, clean up around there. And also we have started, and I think they've got a couple little stops picking up limbs, and they're almost done with that. And that's all I have. Uh, Chris. Uh, the report that you guys had was the previous last month's report. I'll be on sync next month. Um, other than that, we did have a final walkthrough um, two days ago, or no, Friday. We had a final walkthrough Friday in Cars Creek. Uh, they got one house to build in there, and then that subdivision will be done, and gave them a punch out list of things to complete before we'll release the bond. Uh, property standards, Carla, she has been diligent again this month with following up from previous months, and. Um, trying to stay on top of that and then we started a lot due to the lack of grass stopped growing and mowing everything we've turned our attention to storm water and I've got her she's trying to tackle a lot of things we have to do for this permit cycle to uh, submit to the state so that we are in compliance with our uh, MS4 permit uh, other than that that is it we heard anything about the house on Roll Highway I have posted it um, I have advertised it. It's got to run two times in the paper, and then uh, I got to give them 60 days to appeal it at the court, at the Robertson County Court, Chancery Court. Nobody appeals it after 60 days. Um, we'll we proceed from that point on. I'm hoping that somebody sees it and buys it. Is what I'm really hoping. So down there, uh, 2557 over in Park yeah, next to the Chisholm's. Can you repeat this? Uh, 2557 Old Greenbar Pike. House following. Yeah. Been taking action. Cleaned it up. All right, Chief Hamill, he's not here, I don't believe. Rory, I missed Rory. I did, I skipped over you, Rory. <laughs> In the parts where uh, it's been been really busy, staff has been busy this year. Ball season has really been continuous since June. Uh, it's, we're into our last week of it. Uh, football, fall ball should be over Saturday. Uh, it's been through COVID and everything. It's been very successful. We've had um, very few problems related to COVID. Um, we're our like was mentioned earlier that event we had over there for the halloween was it was more it was more people there than we expected but um i mean those events uh people are really wanting to get out and do things and and be a community again so our plans and our plans were before the all the COVID stuff hit is to 
to start doing more events at our parks and uh, we're going to continue planning those. Uh, the project over, and I know several of y'all have been over to look at it at the ballpark with the drainage and the ADA sidewalks, it's complete and uh, it is, uh, I, I'm, I'm proud of the way it turned out. Uh, it's, it, it was uh, something that we've been needing and it, and it looks really good. Uh, now it's time to start planning our Christmas parade and get, you know, it's going to be warm coming up so getting things decorated and getting ready for that. Um, and wrapping things up and getting the park, you know, a lot of things need to be done to get the park back in, into, into shape to start all over again, January. That's all I have. And you, you had discussed putting together a Get the park board back together, you got anything with that? Yes, we are actually, uh, we're going to meet again on the 12th. Uh, Jody Doris is checking on some things to uh, try to get that put together. I want to make it more, um, kind of work toward, more toward a, um, uh, a, a board that can actually go out and raise money, raise funds, and uh, that can go into our park, but uh, we're looking into how to do that and do it the right way. And Jody is doing that for us. And hopefully he has a report on the 12th. Okay. Mm -hmm. Report, reports from the community. Is it, well, there can, there's no reports because no community here. Yes, yeah. <laughs> All right, any old business? Under new business, uh, I was asked to uh, look into, and I think Greenbirds had a fireworks sales before. Uh, the people that asked me about it said they're selling it on both ends of our city limits. So <coughs> we're losing money, so we're letting them shoot the work fireworks, but we won't let them buy them. So I asked Rachel to look into it and prepare a. a uh, ordinance and uh, it's in your packet. I think you want to talk about it. I can. Um, what we currently have is two pages long and the new one um, just defines what they can sell, what they can shoot off, um, how far it has to be, how much parking. And I think um, Alex is still looking at the codes portion of it, but um, if anything changes, we can get back to that. Um, the permit would be a thousand dollars for um, each time period, which there's two: one in the end of June and one in the end of December. And then um, just it just goes through the definitions of you know what's allowed, um, the storing of it, you know, don't smoke around it type of things. So it goes into a lot more depth than what we currently have. Does it discuss how many you allow? Or is that up to the board? Or? I guess that if you want to put that in here, you can put that in here. I don't think we need one on every street corner if we allow it. But I was just asked to bring it back to the board, so uh, there it is. If y'all want to discuss it or have any <coughs> questions. Uh, I was wondering if we could possibly table it and revisit and talk about it. And then that way, if there's anything that we want to tweak in there because like you said if there's one on every corner uh, that's something that we're definitely gonna have uh, I'm not trying to make it a monopoly for somebody but at the same time there doesn't need to be 20 of them uh, the first of June throughout the city of Greenberg um, oh, I, I agree I think I don't know if Ridge Stop may allow two or three I'm not sure how many it is I think it's three yeah I mean I, I don't have a problem if and if we can just add that to it, then I, I wouldn't have a problem. I just, I wouldn't want to see. Well, the reason they were asking this question right now is because we're coming up on Christmas and New Year's sales. Right. It's probably a bigger bigger time, but it's entirely up to the board. I just told them can we, bring it. Can we add that as far as, and, and put a limit on there as well? I think so, yeah. You can limit how I many you want. Is that correct, uh, Alex, do you know? Um, I would know. I'd take it. I would take it one step farther and require them to come to the planning commission and get a special exceptions permit. 
uh, have the Planning Commission approve it because then it kind of puts a basis on, uh, they have to come in propose to us the lot that they're going to use. It kind of gets everything out on the table where you're going to be positioned at and make sure that it fits the area and that it's not going to cause any trouble. Um, I know a couple of and yeah, I know a couple of cities around us going to do that. They do a special exception, and then as long as that person, as long as that same person is the one coming back every year, they just renew their permit. They don't necessarily have to go back to the board, as long as they're the same person going in the same exact spot with the same exact everything. Okay. Um, so that would probably be something I would look at adding in here. Would be going for the planning commission or the zoning appeals and and asking for a special exception permit. Where would the money off the permits go? In general fund? I guess I'll assume it did, yeah. Okay. Chief Pack, you got anything to say about that? Oh, uh, yes, sir. There's one thing. I was looking over this very quickly. Is there anything in the state fire marshal's office uh, requirements or in this that requires these places to be staffed 24 hours a day? Because if they are not, then you're asking for trouble mm -hmm. if somebody decides to throw a match in one. So I think there needs to be something where somebody has to be there with it the entire time that it's over. I'm not sure how the other cities handle that. Do you, do you know what the Springfield does? Well, I know that I, I can find that out, but I know that the, uh, I don't really buy them, but I've noticed that uh, when I was on patrol at night that most of the time those people are there just to protect their investment. Mm -hmm. um, but I I mean, I went to Texas one time to make a pretty good side boom. So. Uh, I will find out and get back with you and the board on, on what the other cities are doing, but I would not uh, suggest allowing them without somebody being there at all times. And these tents are, are, are inspected by the state fire marshal's office. They have to get a permit, so there wouldn't really be any inspection on my part other than making sure that they're following the rules that they said they were going to follow to the planning commission, if that's the way we went with it. Um, as far as the inspection of the building or the structure and the tent itself, State Fire Marshal's office inspects the uh, fire smoke, uh, fire extinguishers, and the uh, area, and make sure they don't have they have no smoking signs up and all that. So. Chief, are you suggesting adding a or suggesting that they provide their own some type of either private security or or are you suggesting that if it's theirs they just protect their investment well themselves? the only thing that i would say is not necessarily have to invest in private security but someone has to be there someone associated with that business has to be there while all these fireworks are just sitting out there because uh, we check we will check them um, frequently because to be perfectly honest with you these places have been robbed they're taking a lot of money uh, it would be my suggestion that they hire private security but i don't think it should be a requirement but i do think that they need a a, a requirement to someone's there all the time while those fireworks are out like that yeah. so yeah. you have your motions in order yeah uh, on that uh, 7-511 limited time period to use fireworks I know over in our area, it was any day, every day, any time. So, it's on page four. You know, well, around here, it, even if you don't sell them, around where I live, it's 24 7. Uh, yeah, I mean, that, that I didn't know how that was going to be enforced, if it was going to be enforced <laughs> or. Uh, <clears throat> well. Sam, I would say this ordinance is for the fireworks uh, sellers. It, it's not for the fireworks users. Well, so. the, that it says limited time to use fireworks. It is unlawful to discharge or use fireworks except for the following time periods. So that sounds like a user issue there. It's 10 a.m. to 10.30 p.m. except July the 3rd. Uh, There's always been an ordinance as far as shooting them, how late you could shoot them. Uh, <coughs> a lot of people don't pay attention to that. Uh, we've never really taken an aggressive stance as far as citing people for it. Most of the time, if we approach somebody, if we get calls, and we do get a lot of calls about it, but most of the time, if we just talk to folks around here, they'll be okay and then go back in the house. We don't have a whole lot of... Uh, 
of issues like some other cities do with people acting full. Most of the time it's not too bad, but uh, the past couple of years it's like, you know, we can hear the uh, little rockets come down on the tin roof. Uh, on I understand the completely. Yeah, was so, uh, I thought, I understand. When I was a kid, I shot him. I wasn't involved there too. But <laughs> I can't deny it. So, so but like I said, we we usually have real good uh, yeah. relations with the folks right here. If we just ask them stuff, oh, yeah. they'll know them stuff. Yeah. All right. I think the motion is to defer this. To well, I'll remove that motion. Uh, I mean, if we can add add those to it, uh, we can we can go ahead. And well, there's no if there's not a problem does it with that. Go to the planning commission for their or the. Uh, if I can add that on there, Alex, if you're okay with with that addition I think it, being placed in here, then then I don't have a problem. With it. And what Chief Pack said. Yeah. Well, we're probably not going to have time to go through all that before Christmas selling season. This, this doesn't have to go to the planning commission. It's mm -hmm. just. Put it in here that they have to come before the planning commission in order to with the addition of somebody being on site and okay. and this going in front of the planning and uh, planning commission upon I guess retaining their, the their special permit. Yeah. Right. Yeah. I'm I'm okay. I'll I'll make a motion. Do you want to limit the number in the seat? I'm not going to limit that. I'm gonna because they have to go in front of playing and zoning. And if they're doing that, uh, I think it has to be, it, it will have to be inspected. It'll have to be, and we don't have that many locations around here. So I believe if they meet the criteria for planning and zoning and they're gonna jump through all those hoops, then and they're okay with it. 7-508 is a big one. Um, requires 12 gravel retained parking spots and has to have an on-site turnaround can't back out on the, can't back out on any street so that one right there is going to rule out a lot of lots well let me ask you this if if they put it on the school property down there i mean it, and it, it meets that regulation uh that i mean it's just for instance that's one area that's probably big enough to do it in town uh, the only other one I can think of is where they're going to put the Taco Bell. Yeah, and the flea market. Yeah. yeah. It would probably... I mean, I, I'm saying three or four places, probably the largest places in town you can do it. But I, I'm good. I mean, it's okay with me to move forward. I just want to make sure that we handle it properly. I think the ordinance is here. It pretty well spells out its... Well, it's a, it's a money maker. If, uh, if the park wanted to man it, I remember back in the 80s, I remember doing it for we, were, we were making big money for the GYSA then, and and we weren't getting all of it. Yeah, we were splitting it 50-50 with the person that supplied the uh, fireworks. Yeah, it, there's big money in it. Can you see you do that? Yeah, I don't think so. I don't think we can get in the fireworks business. No, we, that was because we were a non-profit. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> uh, what's your? Did you finish your motion there? No, I'm just. Uh, I'm good with the the way that it reads, but at the same time, we're gonna have the addition uh, of somebody being with these stands at night, and that this has to go in front of the planning and zoning, and I'll I'll also put in there that will limit Greenbrier to having three and no more. All right, we have a motion. I'll second. Have a second. Any questions? Call the roll, please. Davis? Yes. Deaver? Yes. DeLong? Yes. Doris? Yes. Higdon? Yes. Owen? Yes. Mayor Adcock? Yes. We have a uh, resolution 20 12. It's a resolution for the brush collection of the city property and brush disposal. Uh, do you want to explain?
explain that further. We talked about this last month. Mm -hmm. uh, we actually gave the commercial people who were uh, bringing us chips from where they were grinding. Uh, they gave them letters this past month, and we're no longer taking that. Uh, I think I explained last month, it takes a lot of time from city employees to go down there and clean the hill, keep it pushed off. Uh, citizens are complaining about the smoke. Uh, it lingers for sometimes days. Uh, and it does take a lot of time out of the city employees to go down and do that. We've not had, as far as I know, any complaints from the commercial haulers uh, that we stopped this. Yeah, but this still will allow the citizens to carry their brush. Uh, yeah, it'll be open um, for them. And then um, any, we've noticed <coughs> that um, sometimes the commercial tree trimmers and um, cutters have now been leaving the stuff on the road for the city to get. But um, if they do that, then it'll go through property standards. Um, the city's not automatically going to pick up what a commercial tree trimmer does. So. Uh, in this ordinance, we pick it up twice a year. <coughs> I believe it's April and September. October. October? April and October. And uh, most of the time, what I was told is they tr they go around, try to go around at least two complete times during the month. Uh, but now if we have a storm damage or something comes in, then we, we'll still be willing to help the citizens. But uh, we can't continue to pick up this stuff week to week and month to month. It just takes too much time. Uh, and if, you know, like I said, if we've got elderly people that can't help themselves, but I don't have a problem with going and helping them. But it's just a matter of this day-to-day -day thing, you get calls wanting you to come pick up brush. And sometimes it's more than brush, it's furniture and a little bit of everything else. We have a motion, Mr. Sam. Second. Second with Chris. Any other questions? What are we gonna to do to deter the citizens of the repeat offenders, I call them, that continually put this stuff out in the street? Continually, I mean, it's- Well, I would say they'd be cited. They'll have to be cited by property standards. I mean, my understanding, we're gonna put it in, is it going on the water bill? Yeah. <clears throat> Explaining this, you know what the changes are and that if they put it out there they're going to be responsible for it uh, except for these two times a year unless it happens to be an emergency of some kind oh, yeah yeah no, i still have one you know and i'm sure you all know which one it is it's they oh yeah routinely you know every week or every yeah. two weeks sometimes right after you all come through mm -hmm. the next yeah. day yeah. the yeah. next day sometimes they wait for them to pick it up so they put some rocks on <clears throat> that's what we're that's what we're talking about. We can't keep just going back and back and back. Yeah, it's just continuing. Yeah. Okay. We have a motion. We have a second. Owen made the motion and Davis did the second. David did the second. Okay. Call the roll, please. Davis? Yes. Deaver? Yes. DeLong? Yes. Doris? Yes. Higdon? Yes. Owen? Yes. Mayor Adcock? Yes. down to number 15, uh, finance. Uh, we have a so, uh, water and sewer adjustment, uh, 3,871.47. We have a motion. Second. And a second. Who did second? Steve. Call the roll, please. Davis? Yes. Deaver? Yes. DeLong? Yes. Doris? Yes. Higdon? Yes. Owen? Yes. Mayor Adcock? Yes. And uh, we're down to the last item that was added to the agenda by uh, Alderman Davis. Okay. Uh, in reference to that, I'm gonna make a motion to uh, place the town administrator on administrative leave with pay pending the review of the said position. Second. We have a motion and a second. What is this about? I'm sorry. 
Administrative leave pending a review of and need for the position. It's first I heard of that. <clears throat> uh, put it on the agenda at the beginning of the meeting. Oh, yeah, just then. I mean, that's the first. Okay. <clears throat> who's going who's who's to replace her job duties? I mean, I don't understand. Don't need one. What do you mean? I've we're gonna we're gonna review it after the after the fact. That's what we're doing at the moment. But from this point forward, that's what this board is gonna get with, and we're gonna review the and go over these questions. And when's this supposed to happen? And why are we putting her on leave until then? I don't understand. I don't a, a leave is when I mean, you put somebody on a leave. They've done something wrong, or you or you think they've done something wrong. We're just putting her on administrative leave because we don't want her here, or what? I made the motion, sir. I'm not saying you have to agree with me. I'm just saying, why are we doing it? And I told you that this is about a review of what? Of the of the job and the need for the position in the city. I still don't understand putting her on a leave of absence until this is discussed. I don't even understand why we're discussing it, but why would you put her on leave? And who is gonna, who's gonna take care of those responsibilities? And I, once again, sir, I've told you, you didn't have to agree with me. I'm not. We're not that. gonna discuss it until we get to discuss it after this has been reviewed. And once we've reviewed it and we've entertained that, We'll discuss it in further detail. Well, we have a motion and a second. The color rule. Does it start like as soon as I leave here, or tomorrow? Yes. Okay. Davis. Yes. Dever. Yes. DeLong. No. Doris. Yes. Higdon. No. <clears throat> Owen. Yes. Mayor Adcock. Yes. We have a motion to adjourn. Motion. Second. All in favor say aye. 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 I like to go ha, ha, ha. Ha, ha, ha. I like to go he, he. Big City Dining in Springfield, Depot Bar and Grill.